you all and a very good afternoon and uh, again once again thank you very much for providing this opportunity as i have been told that uh, i have to deliver a lecture on biofuels and its production process i would like to tell that the young faculty members from engineering colleges and uh, also from polytechnics there is a lot of opportunity exist in our country because biofuel is a growing field and in that field uh, continuously the knowledge is also changing from education point of view plus at the same time there is a lot of opportunities for research and development purpose in my lecture uh, before i start my lecture let me introduce myself uh, madam has already introduced this is our panoramic view of university of campus for pandit dindal energy university and uh, we have started in 2003 and it was a brain child of our uh, then cm uh, mr modi and now he is a prime minister and mukesh abmani is our founder president and uh, 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 and this journey continues and we have almost can say electrical and petroleum beside this one mechanical also we have a second round of nb accreditation so this is a small journey through which we have in the last one decade we have traveled and we have some certain achievements are there thank you very much and uh, now let's come to the title uh, this particular talk i am going to cover uh, the what are the policies which motivates for biofuels and then i will talk about classification fundamental mechanism of cavitation techniques which are the major role play playing in uh, industrial development and then industrial perspective of scaling that is what are the challenges to be overcome in a typical reactor because the main challenge in our country is that we do the research in laboratory and then the question comes that how to incorporate for the industry purpose then that answer is difficult so that's why based upon our uh, uh, based upon our research at laboratory level cell india asked us to uh, construct or design a 100 liter hydrodynamic cavitation biodiesel reactor so we are just at the verge of installation of this one and unfortunately a little delayed was there so due to that one i could not uh, can say um, present the data in this particular lecture but uh, we have already designed and fabricated then i will talk about biodiesel production using other cavitation techniques for example rotating hydrodynamic cavitation reactor which is a very very because a decent advanced techniques and which has a wide range of applications in industry for fuel applications as well as non fuel applications and besides this one ultrasound microwave hybrid techniques uh, we also designed in our laboratory then high speed homogenizer again uh, compared to the drawback of mechanical steel can be removed in this case besides this one i will talk about the pre treatment uh, the methodology which you are following in preparation of the fuel uh, the, we can also follow the pre treatment where uh, gamma rays we are using uh, uh, gamma rays we are using for i'll just have a pointer for that one this gamma rays we are following and finally i'll talk about the novel pathways of the biotechnological applications and how these technologies can be useful for uh, in growth of the farmers Uh, income to increase the income of the farmers and how this can play a role in increasing the gdp a little bit idea about that why biofuels if you just look at the recent data of global energy consumption around 600 uh, uh, quintal quintal uh, btu uh, energy requirement is there it is a huge amount this particular unit is for a large amount of energy requirement across the world and out of that one uh, as we are expecting that this will rise in 50% in 2050 in this energy content with due respect to my friends who are working in uh, batteries and other, other aspects a uh, diesel accounts for 30% of the worldwide energy consumption in transport sector it means diesel will have to stay for next 10 to 20 years so therefore we all know the drawbacks of the diesel pollution are there and when diesel is a uh, non renewable fuel so therefore our uh, uh, this uh, conventional energy source is de depleting so due to the diesel water pumps there is always a demand for renewable fuel uh, which can which cannot have an impact on human health we should not have impact on environment and plus fossil fuel depletion issues are there right in case of you can say substitute as a diesel biodiesel play a very important role and this is almost as a lot of awareness has been created the reason for biodiesel is that it is a biodegradable uh, cuz it is a biodegradable in nature it is a renewable in nature lubrication point of view biodiesel is better than the diesel 
and innocuity means it is harmless it will not create any harm to the engine as well as the human being and environment now another important point whenever we substitute uh, or develop another fuel there is always a uh, worry that whether it is suitable for the existing engines or not so thanks to the properties of the biodiesel that if you blend it by volume from 6 to 20 percent in that case the diesel do not you uh, can say the diesel do not invite and modifications in the engine if you just biodiesel plus diesel mixture that is called blending this blending up to 20 percent will not invite and invite any modification in the engine technology besides this one the energy security is there energy emission controls are there it can play a role in the agriculture sector and above all the point is that every year there is a cop 26 uh, there is a cop meetings are there and in cop 26 conference of parties on climate change scotland 2020 already india has a huge commitment regarding the environmental effect and therefore from that point of view biodiesel can play an important role even in our niti ayog indian government initiative to produce green and sustainable fuel they are very clear cut policies are there for research and development and what are the targets fixed by the niti ayog that's important now one thing is very clear in case of uh, this fossil fuel there is open cycle but in the case of the sustainable fuel that is the biodiesel it is a closed cycle right if you extract from the oil the like say this refined crude oil then through transification reaction we produce the biodiesel we fill the biodiesel in the transportation sector and finally co2 is emitted but this co2 can be absorbed by the plants and therefore hence the cycle becomes uh, a closed cycle whereas in the case of fossil fuel what happens uh, the co2 cannot be absorbed and cannot into the fuel so that's why there is open cycle and open cycle should be avoided here also some challenges are there the point is that resource must be very large cost is also an important factor and this scarcity of non-edible feedstock particularly from our country point of view we have more focus on non-edible feedstock because edible feedstocks we cannot use it to convert into biodiesel besides this one the technology point of view we can focus on that one the old mechanical steering technology is obsolete and we can replace it by some new technologies therefore uh, the main difference for motivation is that sustainable biodiesel belongs to the closed carbon cycle which is need of the hour now in laboratory when i will do sometimes what happens we are just fascinated by the research but if the raw material is not large in that case for general purpose or application purpose or industrial purpose that will not be suitable so therefore we have to see that what are the large resources available in our country which can be converted into biodiesel because we have a huge consumption of diesel across the world if you look at palm oil is the major you can say palm oil this particular uh, this uh, bottom portion palm oil and then it is a soybean oil then other oils are sunflower palm kernel oil peanut oil olive oil rap seed cotton seed these are the main uh, can say oils available in the world and they constitute the total requirement of the oils and uh, they are most of the cases in foreign countries they have excess edible oil and excess edible oil what happens they are predominantly triglycerols uh, uh, in which the percentage of triglycerol is around 88 to 98 percent and these triglycerols are important component of a healthy diet that constitutes about 15 to 20 percent of total calories intake in most industrialized countries so this calorie uh, as a food requirement point of view this edible oil play a very important role uh, at present, the global vegetable oil consumption increases from 150 million ton in 2013-14 to 200 million and uh, this metric million tons in 2021. So almost you can say around 40% uh, increase is there in 2013-14 it is there and there is a large increase here in the edible oil. Now what happens? We know that edible oil normally in our country uh, people are using multiple times. But the rule is like this from health point of view something if you take fry particularly in five star hotels and uh, this uh, mcdonald's etc where one time fry is taken place then second time you cannot do the uh, frying again repeatedly in that case the, case the cholesterol quantities of uh, cholesterol quantity will increase in the uh, oil and that is not suitable for health part of you therefore a lot of waste cooking oil is generated in our country and the rules and regulations are quite strict in this aspect so now look at biodiesel production reaches around 804.6 thousand barrels per day of in 2019 that's right 
and since this as this quantity increases the waste cooking oil quantity will also increase and if you just look at the data global waste cooking oil market is around say dollar 5.50 million into uh, 2019 and it is estimated to be dollar 8.48 billions in 2027 so this waste cooking oil quantity is also continuously increasing and this this is a lot of opportunities for industrialization applications and how to make money from this one and it is important that how we can use this waste cooking oil to minimize the harmful impact on the ecosystem appropriate strategies for proper management disposal minimization recycling is important how we can convert into um, other products utilization valorization and remediation of wco need to be developed therefore if you just, you cannot throw it normally what happens in our country um, illegally people mix with the lubricants which is wrong at the same time if you just throw it in the uh, 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 throw it as a waste again if it mixes with the water resource it will pollute the water resource and again that will create a lot of problems so therefore proper supply chain management of this waste cooking oil is important and in our country also we have a large resource now once it is a large source therefore our policies are also quite focused we have national policy on biodiesel uh, sorry this biofuels which includes biodiesel as well as ethanol which is a substitute for petrol so from that point of view uh, you can say uh, first let me talk about the petrol where 2.8 million consumption of gasoline per annum and it is growing with the growth of 8.9 percent and due to this ethanol production capacity has increased from 700 to 1500 crores liters almost you can say this is a very very uh, successful program and the target in the case of uh, ethanol which is a substitute for petrol is 20 percent of ethanol in petrol that is e20 the fraction will be 20 percent ethanol by 25 26 and at present if you compare the target it is 10 percent we are able to mix in case of uh, petrol now earlier government of india never permitted to use the food grains to convert into ethanol but the, uh, I can say this new uh, notification of this national policy clearly tells that damages damaged food grains like wheat, broken rice, which are unfit for human consumption, you can convert them into ethanol. So therefore, conversion of surplus quantities of food grains is approved uh, based upon the approval of National Biofuel Coordination Committee, and you can implement that one. And further, the main objective is using the sustainable fuel is that we have implemented. Path standard sixth from April 1, 2020, and therefore, as this is a stringent pollution requirement, and based upon that, work, we have to develop this sustainable fuel in terms of ethanol. Now, that was uh, about the policy related to ethanol, which is a substitute for petrol. Now, regarding uh, substitute for the case of diesel, we have a production of biodiesel in which we blend with the diesel around 6.98 million ton consumption of gasoline diesel per annum. The government aims to be blend 5% of biodiesel, where 0.35 billion tons in diesel by 2030. Right. And FSSAI claims that India, which is a food, food uh, can say supply and, and safety association of India, it claims that India has the potential to recover 2.2 million tons of used cooking oil, USO, for the production of biodiesel by the year 2022. Means the point is that you see, Indian agencies have clearly predicted that a huge amount of 2.2 million tons of used cooking oil available and the indicative target is 5% blending of biodiesel in uh, diesel by 20-20%. The target is very uh, I guess ambitious but unfortunately till 2018 India has achieved only 0.2% of biodiesel blending so that is a very very dismal performance. How to achieve this target of 5% blending a lot of work has to be done. So from technology point of view, as engineers, we can work. But from raw material point of view, we have to see that which raw material is good. Besides this one, recently, sales of jet fuel jumped uh, more than 43% to 0.62 million tons as per the data. So again, the point is that people are also trying to convert biodiesel into jet fuel, which can be used in the aeroplanes. And again, uh, the, there may be a sustainable fuel in terms of jet oil. These are some targets which uh, government of India is finalized and since the targets are ambitious so therefore a lot of can say the policy encourages the research in the case of biofuels and as a faculty we should be aware of that uh, whatever research we do it should be in uh, incongruous with available uh, policies 
otherwise funding and get to get a funding will be difficult now since the policy supports the research and development in case of biofuels so therefore we can uh, say in last decade we have started to work in the area of this uh, bio, biofuels and we focus on the case of biodiesel we know that in our country whenever the diesel prices increases what happens uh, there is a lot of uh, talk about the price rise in uh, uh, price rise of various uh, commodities and therefore uh, important point is that how we can substitute diesel by biodiesel now for manufacturing of biodiesel what happens conventional technology what happens there are certain limitations uh, as we know that in chemical engineering there is one shaft is there and we mix the feedstock oil with alcohol and we mix it for hours and hours and then finally it is uh, the classification reaction takes place this reaction technology what happens it is a very very inefficient remember that mixing strategy responsible for overall cost if mixing strategy is not correct what will happen the cost will rise if it is in terms of hours means you are consuming a lot of electricity your vessel size will be large your yield uh, per unit time will be small so based upon that one the point is that our new technique must be based upon that mixing uh, mixing strategy must be uh, uh, very very efficient besides this one we uh, can say the conversion technology is high mass transfer resistance uh, uh, and due to this one what happens it is a low reaction rate and uh, higher uh, low reaction rate means uh, this this, uh, this energy of excitation will be very very small higher uh, reaction time and it will consume higher energy consumption besides this one uh, space requirement is also high because mass size limitations are there and plus the technique is sensitive to the field stock quality because quality variations are there quality means the particularly uh, one component which is responsible for reaction is ffa free fatty acid content if this content is low you can easily convert the waste cooking oil into biodiesel but if content is more than two percent sometimes ten percent twenty percent in that case uh, it is difficult to use the lord so uh, the resource available Besides this one, we require the catalyst. Again, the catalyst is a part of pollution and containment. So all aspects are the drawbacks of the conversion technology. And therefore, industry wants to reduce those conversion technology, uh, conversion drawbacks by the new technologies. The new technology, of course, there are many ways you can convert uh, the waste oil into biodiesel. But the technology which has a lot of scope to convert uh, for an industrial scale, which is based upon the cavitation techniques. Cavitation and mechanical engineering, normally they taught, they teach the students that in fluid, me uh, fluid mechanics and fluid machines, that how to avoid cavitation in case of pumps and turbines. Uh, at the thermal factor, we use it uh, so, so that we can see that how we can avoid cavitation. Uh, that is a destructive part or one side of the coin of the cavitation. But if you utilize for positive aspects point of view cavitation, then it is the other side of the coin where controlled cavitation, we can use it for various applications. And this controlled cavitation is based upon the surface tension T1, which has the two categories, sonification and hydrodynamic cavitation. This sonication is based upon the ultrasound techniques. This is a horn type ultrasound. And whenever a typical frequency of ultrasound dipped into the liquid, uh, the ultrasound which passes through the liquid, where continuous, you can say, bubble formations are there and those bubbles will compress and expand and finally the mixing takes place in this case another example is that hydrodynamic cavitation where uh, i can say the fluid passes through for example say upstream side to downstream side it passes through uh, orifice or it may be venturi also and in that case the pressure variation due to velocity variation in flow systems because there is pressure difference is there pressure difference causes the velocity variation and this creates a lot of cavitation conditions in the downstream side. You can see that pressure reduces, and then there's a recovery of the pressure. So these conditions in the downstream side, a lot of, you can say, uh, cavitation conditions are generated. And I'll just explain the mechanism that due to which mechanism of cavitation, the reaction becomes very, very fast. Let me talk about the first ultrasound cavitation or sonochemical effects which was first discovered by Richard and Loomis in 1927. Here, a typical frequency generator is there. If the frequency is 10,000 megahertz, it is less than that one, we can call it as a low frequency ultrasound. If it is more than that, we can call it as high frequency ultrasound. Normally, 40,000 kilohertz, if you are using, that will be uh, 20 to 40,000 kilohertz, that frequency is sufficient for mixing of 
two immiscible liquids, particularly when it's alcohol and the other is that this uh, uh, triglyceride oil is there. So in that case, oil uh, due to less density, alcohol is at the top and uh, the oil is at the bottom. How the mixing will take place? In that case, this ultrasound frequency play important role. If you look at this mechanism here, we can see that uh, we can see that this co continuous compression and rarification it will take place. Compression means the size of the bubbles will reduce, whereas in case of you can say uh, rarification, the size will expand. The continuous expansion and compression takes place, and finally, the implosion i am not using the explosion word implosion of the bubbles will take place and when the bubble implosion takes place inside the bubble the temperature is around 5000 degree kelvin and the pressure is 1000 atmosphere the generation of cavitation bubbles with water vapor trapped inside and its implosion at critical radius that is the main mechanism which was declared by jore et al in 202021 uh, so this mechanism understanding is also important people are understanding to this one now this part, this kind of things, of course, ultrasound has a huge number of applications. But what is this mechanism? How we can utilize this one? That's important because in that case, what happens in acoustic cavitation? There is a rapid phase change process, including a nucleation of uh, bubbles, then growth of bubbles, and finally the collapse of bubbles of the numerous cavitation bubbles under acoustic waves. Once the uh, this, uh, this implosion takes place, there is enormous amount of energy released due to collision of bubbles and which generates mechanical, thermal, and chemical effects at room conditions. Overall, this mixture is at atmospheric conditions. But at bubble level, at micron level, the point is that, uh, I can say, the, the reaction takes place due to the bubbles. What happens? The temperature and pressure conditions are different. And those pressure conditions are called uh, this dissociation uh, of gases and the liquids. And due to that, what, what happens? The reaction becomes very, very fast because uh, the radicals are generated and those radicals replaces the amount of catalyst and due to that one what happens the reaction becomes very very fast so this uh, due to the in the inside the bubbles you can just uh, can surprise to know that the extreme reaction environment of the physical impact for example say just at micro level shock waves micro jets and shear stress and high temperature 5000 kelvin and high pressure 1000 kelvin these are the primary effects Besides this one, the second effects are uh, uh, turbulence, mechanical oscillations, emulsification, dispersion, crushing, heating. The com combination of primary effects and the second effects. Due to that one, what, what happens? The mixing becomes very efficient and the work which we can do it in the case of mechanical strings in hours, it requires hardly a couple of minutes in that case we can do it. And what is the application? Implication is that when the things we, uh, we can cover, uh, finish in minutes means I use energy, you can save it. And plus, the size of the uh, equipment will be quite small. The overall improvement in mixing without stringent reaction conditions. That is the main feature of this ultrasound cavitation. But uh, normally, when you do anything in the laboratory, people have criticism that ultrasound, of course, you can do it in laboratory. But the industry wants a very big size equipment. Can ultrasound fulfill to that one? That is the answer one has to find out. Here, I just have a more detailed diagram of mechanism where this particular, you can say, it is, this theory is called as hot spot theory. In the downstream side, when the bubble is there, then it is inside portion is the hot spot region where the temperature and pressure is quite high. A molecular, this, because at this temperature, the dissociation will take place and radical, radicals are formed. Now, this surface is in contact with gas liquid interface, right? Again, this temperature is slightly lower than this and it is at more atmospheric pressure. The radicals which are formed here, they will react with the parent molecules and there is a thermal breakdown will take place. And finally, this portion is your bulk liquid. So, micro level, this mechanism, this play an important role. And in this case, the each cavity acts as a micro reactor where high pressure and high temperature conditions are created and releases large amount of energy in a very short duration. That is within a 50 microseconds. A huge one of the because bubble implosion takes place, uh, energy is released in terms of you can say micro jets. And in this portion in the hot, hot spot region, you can see that alcohol and other things that are into uh, radicals, and those radicals react with the liquid, and in that case, the reaction becomes very fast. 
But in transification reaction, the same thing happens. This particular reaction, uh, it happens, and the requirement of catalyst is reduced. And through a conventional way, what we can do in terms of minutes, we can perform by this mechanism inside the hydro, uh, this hydraulic catalyst reactions. These are the main mechanism which is still people are trying to understand. And remember that in conventional equipments, you cannot find out these things. But in sophisticated instruments, people have, uh, can say, verified this particular mechanism. And as a macroscopically, how we can utilize this application for industrial application purpose, that is our aspect. <laughs> From that point of view, you can say, at laboratory level, many of the people, how to achieve the sonochemical effect in hydraulic cavitation, people have used this, say, 50 liter uh, typical reactor is there, in which through a valve, uh, can say uh, it goes to the pump, which is a double diaphragm pump. Through the pump, you can supply this, uh, can the liquid mixture to an orifice plate. Orifice plate, you see, these are the at the bottom, it is shown. There may be one, uh, can say, uh, one hole or a multiple holes. There may be, you can say, venturis, it may be circular venturi or maybe a slit venturis. So all these devices are called as hydraulic cavitation devices. And these devices, through these devices, if the fluid passes with the pressure difference of three to five bar, in that case, what happens on the downstream side, the cavitation conditions are generated. And we have in our laboratory also designed this kind of apparatus where in hydrogen cavitation and any kind of oil you can use it. Since we are in Gujarat, so we have a huge amount of castor oil, uh, castor oil available. And again, remember that this is a very, very stringent oil, which is very important to have. Remember that in Gujarat, the castor oil production is not only highest in the country, it is highest across the world. So therefore, conversion of castor oil into biodiesel is a very important success. The molar ratio we used 9.8 to 1, catalyst percentage 1.1, temperature was hardly 60.3, and in 51 minutes, we have produced, converted the this oil into biodiesel, and the yield, yield was 93.8 percent. This is a, not a rocket science, simple procedure. It is available where uh, say, when the mixer passes through a liquid, uh, can say, and any uh, venture device or orifice device, then the ca cavitation conditions are generated in the downstream side, and this is helpful to NS the reaction. This is, uh, say, it means that, uh, say, I'll just tell you that this particular thing was first, uh, can say, uh, uh, you know, this, uh, they are reported by the Pandit and Joshi. And they employed an orifice to hydrolyze fatty oils and discovered that hydronomic cavitation could induce could uh, induce a similar sonochemical effect for uh, acoustic cavitation with considerable high efficiency. So till then, uh, people were aware that okay, ultrasound can do it, but the same aspect we can do it by hydronomic cavitation. And because this technique is, I uh, can say, in the same way, what do uh, what is achieved in the case of ultrasound? Same thing you can achieve it in the down sound way uh, compared to ultrasound. And plus, this technique is quite scalable. scalable. We can convert 50 liters to 100 liters, 100 liters into uh, 1000 liters. The scalability of this particular plant is very, very good. Now, again, the point is that in ultrasound, we have seen that continuous compression expansion of bubbles takes place. Here, what are the main mechanisms through which at the downstream side, uh, this uh, cavitation techniques are, cavitation mechanism is generated. It is due to intrinsic instability, that is development of a reentrant re jet mechanism. At micron level, jets are there on the body surface, vortex, in, uh, vortex interaction of wave flows and pressure wave emissions. These are the very, very complex phenomena of micro jet mechanism with high CV and this uh, cavitation number. Besides this one, there is a system in instability, that is interaction among cavities, that is rotating cavities intermossally. These are the mechanism responsible for cavitation conditions. This, this is the mechanism in case of liquid-liquid interaction. Sometimes we can have heterogeneous liquid-liquid interaction systems where we can use a heterogeneous catalyst. So in that case, what happens? This whole system is intensified by turbulent, turbulent inertial force and the rapid change of the vapor liquid bubble interface destroys the boundary between alcohol and oil. And because in that case, the turbulence play an important role, leading to the immersification of two, phase, two phases and generate and generation of fine and stable emulsion. So whenever the emulsion formation is required, this technique is very good. And within a couple of minutes, a homogeneous emulsion you can generate. 
Further, the contact surface area available for the reaction between reactants can be significantly increased, overcoming the mass transfer barrier. In addition, the re released energy lowers the required activation energy. And finally, heterogeneous uh, liquid solid systems. Heterogeneous uh, system means uh, we are using a heterogeneous uh, as catalyst as uh, 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 heterogeneous catalysts. For example, say calcium oxide if you are using. In that case, what happens? In addition to above mentioned points, the mechanical effect of hydrogen cavitation significantly raises the effectiveness of a solid catalyst. Now, we have done the laboratory research. Laboratory research is quite good, and almost can say, in, uh, uh, can say ultrasound, we have done it, then we have tried it in the case of hydrogen cavitation. Again, 10 liters, 50 liters, you can generate it. But the point is that, industry part of you, it should be in the order of 100,000 liters. So in that case, what happens? How to incorporate the research which we have done in the laboratory experiments? That same efforts, how we can use it for the industrial purpose. So in that case, the main requirement is that first we have to see that challenges that combined experimental and numerical studies. Normally, people do it numerical studies which are not sufficient because until unless they are validated by experimental data, it is not considered to be good one. Right? So it requires deeply studied, including spatio temporal evolutions in hydrodynamic calcium reactors. Besides this one, since the mechanism of any chemical reaction is complex, so therefore it needs to be investigated and established, which are still absent. The similarity laws are important to amplify the progress strategy. Above all, the most important is the economic feasibility on a pilot scale. In the literature, what happens most of the time it is available process simulation only. Nobody is talking about the e economic aspect. But when you talk about the higher level experimental aspect, the point is that economic feasibility of such process or a pilot or a movie and a large amount of research on the feasibility by LCA, that is <coughs> that is like a life cycle assessment and life cycle costing and assessment. In a combined way, these two things we approach. That is how the case from starting from cradle to death, how we can use it as this mechanism is required. Besides this one, in laboratory, what happens? We do not talk about durability, stability, and safety of the our system. So these aspects are also important while uh, designing of the system. So finally, we can say that if you include those aspects from commercial point of view, then we can say that hydrodynamic cavitation assisted conversion of WCO may be a useful, uh, more realistic direction for future development. Based upon with this background, we have done it laboratory, we have, uh, can say, uh, can, we have uh, patented our uh, can say process, then published the papers, and then we have started to impress the industry to make it as a, uh, can say this, uh, to start an entrepreneurship or you can say, uh, to convert biodiesel into, sorry, this waste oil into biodiesel, we have started designing the plant of uh, capacity was around say, 100 liters. 100 liters, why we have kept? Because 100 liters is a, uh, is a good size, which can be easily scalable in terms of 1,000 or 10,000 liters. Our methodology is very, very simple. You can say selection of the feed stock. We, we are interested to select a feed stock which is available in large quantities. There are many non edible oils out there which are available uh, in our country, but back in a very small quantity. Therefore, the need required for blending will not be fulfilled. So we have searched in the literature that the most uh, used say the field stock is non-edible non, non oils, which consists of waste cooking oil, soy acid oil, and catalyst available is calcium oxide, potassium hydroxide, and solvent, you can use methanol and ethanol. Right? So with this exercise that, okay, from this one, how we can achieve, we can gain the, uh, gain the advantage, we have started working. And then we have talked about the different, different processes. And finally, you can say selection of biodiesel production steps. At this point, the selection of biodiesel steps play an important role. And then once we have the experiments uh, in our hand, in that case, DOE is important. So I would just like to, since uh, in this lecture, it's difficult for me to tell about DOE, but design of experiments is a very, very important aspect in all walks of experimental performance. DOE based on the DOE uh, okay, reaction is uh, again the, can say the mechanism is hydronic cavitation and if you can say uh, that uh, 
two types of reactions. One is the one stage means uh, transfiguration only, and two stage means esterification and transfiguration reaction. And if some pretreatment is required, then again you can say this uh, the system can be used as a pretreatment process. Then once the reaction takes place here, the point is that the, the mixture is kept into the um, mixed bottles, and in that case, the separation, flash evaporator, washing steps, and drying can be done in case of post as a post uh, post treatment uh, post treatment of the reaction. Finally, once we have product, that the point is that we have to optimize the process. And for that, the standard techniques are available and one can follow very easily. Once based on the optimum condition is determined, for that condition, again, we have to make the performance of biodiesel operating conditions. And based upon this one, we can characterize, uh, we can characterize our biodiesel. And in which, which also includes physical chemical properties of biodiesel and their, comp their comparison with ASTM standards. So based upon this particular diagram where energy, uh, can say mass balance, energy balance, and other things, we have, can say, we have developed the second one. That is, the, this is nothing but the scalability. That is, hydrodynamic cavitation technique in the sim, is the simple answer. Here, this is our designed power plant. Uh, sorry, this bio, uh, bio plant where tank one and tank two is there, right? In two tank biodiesel system, what happens? Tank one pre-treatment, pre-heating, esterification, transfiguration reaction takes place in uh, in tank one. Right? This is tank one. Then we can have a plant-wise visualization glass. Here, this blue color is shown as a gap where we can see that what kind of reaction is taking place uh, in case of uh, uh, in actual cylinder once we fill the feedstock and oil. Now this, uh, we have a lot of expectations from this 100 liter plant because this will give you a typical approach where you can say uh, uh, research scholars, they can and uh, they will work, uh, earn while you learn based upon this philosophy. And the design has already been done and the commissioning, commissioning is required for that one. Again, when you talk about that, since we have designed this 100 liter biodiesel plant, in that case, we have to be very careful that we cannot change the technology based upon the available feedstock. Our large quantity available feedstocks are waste cooking oil and soy oil and cashew nut cell oil. These are the largest quantities available in our country. Now, the point is that when compared with the other oils using cooking, cooking oil is characterized by low price, elevated ease of assemblance from houses and restaurant university. So, waste cooking oil collection requires a lot of, you can say, uh, supply chain management. And since the raw material is less than 40, uh, 40 rupees per liter, so therefore it is a very cheap uh, raw, source, raw, raw source available for biofuel. And the price, which you can say we got it around say 20 to 30 rupees uh, in the market, this particular, you can say, which is oil. And available quantity based upon FSSAI, it is 2200 million uh, life, uh, life liters per year. and Second point is that millions tons per year, second unit, you can say. Besides this waste cooking oil, which is a large source available, right? And another is the soya, soya acid oil, because in that case, what happens? Acid oil, acid oil normally is a byproduct of uh, edible oil. If you say the 100 is the total uh, biofuel available, in that case, the 10% may be your glycerol, and the remaining portion can be. Again, the point is that that should be separated. So mainly, we can see that in our country, we separate three types of resources, and all three are important. One is waste cooking oil, second is soya acid oil, and the third one is cashew nut cell oil (CNSL). That that uh, again, it's uh, as a requirement uh, is very very high as far as the, uh, this particular things are concerned. So now, based upon this large source, I uh, can say large amount of uh, the free fatty acid content, uh, the free stock is having. We have just, you can say, designed this biodiesel plant for 100 liters, right? Left hand side is a 3D, 3D design, and right hand side is the, you can say, a big size power plants, which I which I inaugurated by our manufacturer. So this particular case of biodiesel, 
uh, the things are that almost you can say one have to require a leave uh, in that case what happens anybody has to spend a lot of time on this, this case so first tank almost you can say it is for esterification purpose when FFA content is higher more than two first we will do esterification so that triglyceride uh, 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 FFA content is reduced and then in the case of second the recovery suppression washing and drying takes place Expected outcome, we can see that performance parameters, almost you can say, most important point is that I have not included the data of your mechanical stream. This, this plant almost can say we have designed and it will be installed in our PDPU campus. Yield efficiency, uh, that is gram per joule is 11.48 newtons per minus 4, which is achieved at a lab level. And it is very high as compared to the conventional efficiency of other methods. Conversion. That is the weight percentage greater than 96.5 percent as per the european standards uh, the yield quantity must be more than 96 percent so we are achieved quantity 96.5 percent which fulfills and complies with the international requirement standards what are the interest standards it is european EN, european uh, european rules and regulations 1400 to uh, 214. short reaction duration by utilizing this afresh design or face plate to induce the bubble supported by the dual diaphragm pump in a research pilot uh, hardware cavities. Normally, you can say in that case, the optimum condition comes as molar ratio to one between the uh, between the methanol and the oil. One one weight percentage QH alcohol uh, this alcohol uh, alkali catalyst and an operating temperature of 60 degrees centigrade. Now, besides the operating conditions, in uh, can say this is uh, based upon the hydronic cavitation, so therefore, geometrical conditions also play an important role. So, at what location, the number of holes, what should be the distance between the number of holes, what should be the depth of uh, case, the number of holes, all these things play an important role uh, in this particular uh, techniques. When compared to mechanical steam, now, optimized shape of the plate will lead to an eightfold increase in energy efficiency and six-fold reduce in reaction time, right? So the, here the meaning is that whatever the claim uh, we are claiming in case of mechanical string, these are the quite superior as compared to our, uh, this is as compared to our conventional uh, competitors, the performance is very, very good. By including hydrogen cavitation to the manufacturing of biodiesel, the procedure becomes less harmful to the surrounding ecosystem. Now, this uh, whatever I have talked, it was a, your you can say cavitation device plus hydraulic cavitation where the pressure is generated by a pump and it drops within the orifice, orifice device. Besides this one, we have the new technologies for the based upon the same mechanism. We have uh, a typical uh, technique which is known as a rotating. Earlier, what happened? It was a non-rotating. Uh, hydraulic cavitation but here a rotor is there here this force you can see that rotor is there and outside the rotor the stator is there you can see that it is a cylinder but in the cylinder inside what happens at in a random manner the whole different holes are produced by uh, um, in, in a workshop these are the bind holes not cross through only up to uh, some centimeters we are producing the holes now again the point is that the same mechanism we can achieve it that okay around 3000 rpm you rotate this one here yeah, the liquid becomes very very fast it can be converted into biodiesel and the excess alcohol you can recover either you can purchase it or either you can uh, you can place it for waste cooking for oil purpose right so here in our laboratory we have designed this rotating hydraulic cavitation detectors around outside it is a Stationary, uh, uh, stationary cylinder is there, and inside there is a dynamic cylinder which uh, uh, which continuously rotates. Besides other uh, process intensification techniques, we have worked in the case of uh, waste cooking oil plus methanol. We have worked with uh, this, uh, these are the methanol, and these are the two different type of catalyst. And based upon this one, we have worked in the ultrasound. Um, this uh, 
this this is for the case of microwave radiation and finally you can say this is for hybrid reactors you can use it right so these three are important one first one is you can say uh, this uh, uh, microwave then uh, you can say uh, ultrasound right then it is combined one and this is only you can say uh, ultrasound uh, this particular mechanism microwave radiation sorry for all the devices we have worked and the results clearly indicates that we have very good quantity of yield we are getting and all the uh, achieved yield is i can say as per the stand, european standards and our bs standards and they satisfy the limit and therefore uh, this avc components are important while the can say uh, us micro ultrasound and micro uh, this equipments are important in cavities presented the cavities conditions now remember that i have seen that many groups they just go suppose the variables are more than three or four and full factorial means it is three to power nine or four to power four right the huge number of experiments one have to perform but thanks to the design of experimental uh, methodology that we have to reduce or minimize the number of observations through which we can get the same output results now methanol in the presence of potassium hydroxide and calcium carbonate calcium oxide they are using as a catalyst uh, you can say heterogeneous catalyst we are using now here also we can have sequential ultrasound and micro reactors again the scale amount is quite large as compared to small one there are hardly half liter one liter but here a 15 liters oil is there which for, which will first pass to ultrasound then it will pass to microwave here then it will come back right so continuous circulation through two turbine uh, this one is your ultrasound another is your uh, this is my, another is your microwave in that case the point is that uh, you can say due to micro um, uh, this micro mechanism what happens the dipole moments are generated in the molecules of water and ultrasound what happens the bubbles are formed so both mixing i can say mixing play important role in generating the technology the combination of combination can yield uh, systematic results due to the complementary effects and similar to the control mechanism so all these components are important and our results are seven to one modular ratio 0.9 percentage of catalyst Five minute due to time and six to uh, two degree temperature and with ninety seven and degree Kelvin. Ninety seven degree, uh, can say it is yield we are producing. Ninety six percent of yield we are producing. So this is again in the laboratory we have developed and a very good amount of this particular, you can say yield quantity we can produce. The combination not only can improve the yield, reduces the reaction time and alter the process chemistry, giving enhanced selectivity. Uh, this is the diagram where you can say if you go for ultrasound in a big way earlier the foreign countries uh, uh, the german and the french countries were there and those uh, french company was the deuce and hilcher was the german company if you import it price will be very high and therefore commercial viability is a little bit difficult but nowadays even in Andhavad and other uh, the local big cities ultrasound big side ultrasounds are preparing and they are available whatever the size you tell accordingly they can design and they can produce this ultrasound uh, this uh, big size devices so therefore whenever a big size i can say reaction is required in that case you can use a big size uh, this uh, uh, this particular ultrasounds but nowadays size limited uh, size is not a limitation even bigger sizes are also available besides this one now again i am coming to the high speed homogenizer where in which area we are working it is a simple device where a shaft rotates relatively high RPM. In conventional mechanical steam, what happens? The shaft rotates around 100 to 500 RPM, whereas in that case, the shaft rotates from 12,000 to 16,000 RPM, which is considered to be very, very high RPM machines. Now, in those machines, for example, say if it, it is a, uh, the final uh, portion of this particular spindle, in that case, what happens? It rotates. The mechanism is like this. From center portions, the, uh, the bubbles are coming, and due to shearing effect, what happens? The bubbles become half year and they'll become smaller sizes, and finally they will collect it. So, just this is important that okay, how the cavities conditions are generated, 
and in this, from industrial manual what happens industry will never tell you how this uh, which mechanism it is working but the results is like this if uh, say you cannot go uh, our devices are not enough for go for a small scale but it is suitable for the case of large scale where a very uh, can say uh, very stringently one can use it for everything purpose of course these are the regression analysis we have done it a simple taguchi method we have applied and we have found that which parameter is important one molar out of molar ratio catalyst loading time and speed again to reduce the cost we have also worked in the case of you can say in situ classification remember that whenever you compress the seeds say for example roughly we have purchased a 5 rupees per kg the seeds of jatropha when you compress it uh, for 1 kg then the point is that its price will increase triple times so it will become 15 rupees per uh, per liter or uh, liter of oil you can get that right so therefore it's important that we have to see that how we can abstract the direct oil from that is called an instant transfusion from value production so again uh, this is a typical hybrid reactor where bottom portion we are supplying the ultrasound for right to side we are providing this microwave and based upon and this one the mixing will take place here and this portion will never come again to this point the uh, here the point is that here this is a cake which is formed at the bottom and mixing takes place well, you can see there are two forces uh, microwave and ultrasound both are working at 90 degree angle and therefore in that case mixing becomes very very fast right so in uh in situ transfusion uh, in situ transfusion has a main feature is that uh, it will uh, can say it will have a scalability effect and at the same time uh, can say large uh, large quantity of because the plant can be installed so main issue here is that since this is a furnace two fields are generated so we have taken a small sample size but for the larger type of because furnaces if you make it it is just like a cake walk almost because there are a lot of demands are there at present we have purchased from china which is nothing even if manufactured it, it will become three to four lakhs whereas from china we have imported it around 16 lakhs now we all know that the lipid content inside the vegetable oil play a very important role we have heard that suppose some radiation is passed through edible ed edible seeds then what happens the mutation and other effects are uh, minimized here also the point is that uh, we have used the uh, this radiation techniques in which we have passed it through the seeds of the oil and we have clearly see that this particular you can say uh, these are the acids produced that uh, this uh, whisking oil and then based upon this one the point is that other property density moisture content ffa content kinetic viscosity and oil content we are just driven from the system now here we have taken the data and we can see that here the point is that total unsaturated fatty acids it is you can increased and based upon that one how much dodge it is good we have seen that in taking this particular you can say yield data uh, from that point of view uh, this almost all the yield total unsaturated fatty acids are there they are in good uh, percentage and if they disturb the lipid uh, this x-ray gamma x-rays if they disturb the lipid content in that case your the inside that one the chains are broken and when the very oil itself the this can oil can be collected from that one the comparison of optimum conditions for normal that without in situ we have done it and based upon this one this uh this 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 component based on parato chart this component is the highest effective and this component is the lowest one okay based upon this one optimum conditions we have got it in the case of in situ we have uh, less molar ratio which is uh, with the need of the time then less catalyst amount of course the time is slightly increased because the total quantity requirement per unit mass of you can say my field stock is per then minute yield slightly increased then your three percent is increased the expert yield and, and expert right? So based upon this one, you can find out the other things. Of course, 
extrason whenever you do the reaction extrason kinematics is important and it is not a rocket science very easily yeah you can just develop that what is the transition energy this diffusion coefficient and what is the value of activation energy very easily you can calculate it so this is a very simple calculations i will not go much in detail but diffusion coefficients you can find out and activation energy you can calculate using those diagrams now technique is one aspect the old technique with the new techniques besides this one there is slight difference between the properties of diesel and biodiesel so another important aspect uh, where we are working is that how we can improve the properties of biodiesel to improve the biodiesel what happens there are many methods are followed but couple of major methods are you can say blending of ethanol with biodiesel then we can have blending of different oils blending of different biodiesel from uh, different oils the meaning is that you see at present we are producing the biodiesel with methanol we want to see that ethanol will be produced a large quantity in the country so therefore any attempt in which we can replace methanol by ethanol in that case sustainability will be important and at the same time a good quality yield and property improvement is possible therefore this is also an important one so here uh, one conclusion we have drawn is that changing alcohol in biodiesel production blending of ethanol with biodiesel and blending of different rock oils are more effective Now, people say that uh, when you produce a biodiesel, almost hydrocarbon, carbon dioxide, and other things, the point is that pollution level is reduced due to less emission of those quantities. But main drawback of you can say this particular biodiesel is that when uh, ox is found, we have to throw it that fossil. Therefore, one important point is that we have added this ethanol. Ethanol means this particular name is the biodiesel is the seventy percent, fifteen percent is butanol, and fifteen percent is you can say. And uh, biodiesel, right? Out of 100%, 15% ethanol and 15% uh, biodiesel. So, in that case, we can see that not only all other components of, uh, can say, this hydrocarbons and other, other things, they are reduced, but at the same time, oxides of nitrogen is also reduced. That is the main advantage of this particular research. And we are published in a very, very reputed journal that is uh, uh, this uh, re uh, sustainable reuse and then uh, renewable energy. So now, with these are, you see, the two, two techniques which we have used is hydraulic cavitation and your, you can say uh, rotating type of hydraulic cavitation theaters. When you use the two types of techniques, what happens? These are a simple one, but it has a other applications, right? So we have to see that how, what should be the novel pathways for the biotechnological reunion and uh, reutilization of WCO using various strategies and technologies. Our, even in our United Nations, it has been written that. Uh, clean water and sanitation, affordable and clean energy, they are part of the, you can say, uh, SDI, uh, SDG, United States Nations uh, Sustainable Development Goals. So one of the important part is that fuels are an important part and you can convert the fuels into application purpose. So this should be done in such a way that there must not be any, I can say, uh, conflict must not be there and there must be some urgency that must be required. Here you can see that the circular economy uh, and something is used, supplied to, and then it is reduces again, it is generated. Likewise, in a, uh, in a double role, it is there. Right. So I will not go in details that utilization is that based upon the government policies, there must be some strategy and how this increased quantity of biodiesel, we can use it by considering this biotechnological utilization of produce here. One important application which is totally untouched field is that lubrication. Every almost can say, uh, whenever there is a relative motion between the machine, those parts always require the lubrication. Biodiesel can be used as uh, as, a, uh, as a path to generate lubricants. For example, sorry, single uh, single step we can use transfiguration, we can use we can get the biodiesel from field stock to biodiesel. Second transfiguration stage two, if you do it. In that case, what happens? This is called a tamper process in which the finally you can get the alcohol plus triesters. So within the two-step process, we can usually achieve the lubricants, and those lubricants are the biolubricants. They can uh, they can use as substitute for the existing lubricants, which are creating a lot of problems in the industry. So again, this is another example of where you can through biodiesel route, 
you can uh, you can uh, you can reduce uh, you can increase the production of you can say biofuels now finally one important slide that uh, technological breakthrough hydrogen cavitation it is not rocket science but only for last one to two years a lot of literature is coming and again in the developed world also people are saying that how uh, you can say you can boost because this particular because this uh, diagram i have taken from the author from the italian it, uh, from italy they are also in europe people talk about the boost of farmers income because they are, they, are, they also don't want to join the uh, job at the farming the point is that here main thing is that this technique has energy conservation uh, energy conservation less time consumption and plus cost saving so due to that this is what happens these technology this hydrogen cavities and state production can also be applied for fruits vegetable beverages here almost like ethanol we are generating and beers so these techniques of you can say for ether, uh, as ethanol public, uh, as a production the same techniques can also be useful so point is that these technologies if you just use it and apply it for farmers application purpose then farmers can uh, adopt it very quickly and not only through growing but also by incorporating the renewable energy with uh, with the farmers the average income per annum is estimated that it should increase if properly the hydrodynamic cavitation techniques are applied picture scope let uh, us i'll take uh, five minutes more then we can have a small question answer session the point is that these are the techniques which is uh, belongs to uh, the future belongs to these technologies i have discussed and worked a lot in case of you can say fuels but in biotechnology extraction food supply chain pre treatment water treatment medical manufacturing pharmaceutical recycling hydrometallurgy coal combustion various wide range of fields are there where these techniques can be applied and therefore we can say that hc is a technological breakthrough with the potential to transform the renewable fuel processor sector in turn part of such a large subsystem as fuel supply chains the resulting effect should be assessed in the frame of holistic sustainability assessment because this will help you to achieve the sustainable development the any technological advance, advancements such as hydrodynamic cavitation based could be especially efficient because they would proceed mostly along a free market pathway thereby avoiding future burdens on consumer shoulders such as by means of proposed taxation because after covid era a lot of public uh, say this uh, public has suffered a lot and the conversion techniques if you follow conversion taxation will be higher so these hydrodynamic cavitation based techniques if we can start the process and plus with low taxes in that case such as unsustainable conventional fuel admitted largely due to economically regressive uh, effects so therefore this techniques can play an important role in development of the gdp besides this one as an individual each technique has some certain drawbacks but process intensification and hydrogen cavitation in combination parallel or series if you use it in that case the point is that the effect will be we can say uh, there are positiveness will be further enhanced and at the same time they will create a new job opportunities which is very important in development countries like india so these techniques in last two or three years i have seen that uh, can say a number of papers patents they are coming and in europe also they are working so therefore i can divide all these techniques into application of fuel and non fuel non fuel means waste water treatment or yeah, can say in industry food industry uh, milk industry hydro metallurgy where mixing is required or some reactions a plus b become c plus d in that case what happens this is knowledge knowledge is available 100 years back but the point is that how we can use this knowledge to convert the technology technology means how you can enhance the reaction can we uh, can, can we get the reaction at atmospheric conditions can we get it very fast activation energy can be reduced so all these things play a very important role so therefore here again my submission is that there is a need to integrate pi techniques in laboratory courses across various engineering disciplines because i have seen that even chemical engineering people are not teaching even mechanical engineering they are not teaching but these are the techniques which has a huge applications in industry and therefore this our new i can say this new generation students they should be taught or some ideas must be given in the laboratory to them uh, regarding this pi techniques so that in industry they can become successful so this is a little diagram almost can say we can develop various if you can, uh, can say any of uh, the audience if they get the opportunity to visit uh, the gandhinagar 
please visit Pandit Dindal Energy University where we have developed these process anticipation techniques and uh, mainly you can say we have developed ultrasound microwave hybrid techniques and sequencing technique we have also developed hydrodynamic power shock wave reactor and supercritical autoclave feed stocks we are focused on the case of you can say fish cooking oil and or waste oil uh, for example say soya waste oil and palm waste oil we are working on that one and we have blended oils also we are working in situ means directly from the oil seeds we can just get that one i have discussed in my lecture so these are the certain developments which you have given and of course we have also got some good rewards around more than 10 patents we have got it and we said this one around very highly reputed journals for example uh, energy and uh, energy conversion management and uh, this uh, renewable energy journals we have got our publications due to the importance of this new research area these are my teams. I am working with Professor uh, Dr. Payun Kodigre, who is from Chemical. So always, you can say interdisciplinary research. I am from Mechanical. He is from Chemical. So always, you can say complement. It is required. My research scholar is in uh, postdoctoral. Uh, postdoctoral. He is doing postdoctoral in IIT Bombay. She is now in Canada, and my other students here. They are working with me. So now this is. I am very very thankful to all my audience uh, with the patience hearing, and this is a brief idea regarding that one. And if now I request Madam to have some question answers, if I'm able to give the answers, or otherwise they, they can write me uh, through mail, I can just provide them. 